Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Anybody brought the hallelujah to the house of the Lord this morning? I did a lift your voice and give him glory. I did a lift your voice and tell God thank you. Father, we bless your name, Jesus. Father, we give you glory for your great and your greatly to be praised, oh God. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same sun. It's your name and your name alone that's worthy. We give you glory this morning. We give you glory this morning, Jesus. We give you honor, God. There's nobody like you. There's nobody stronger. There's nobody wiser. And God, before we ask you for anything, God, we come saying thank you this morning. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for your tender mercies that are made new to us every morning. Thank you, oh God, for what we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that you've done. Our souls cry out hallelujah. We brought our hallelujah. We bring the sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord this morning. We bring the sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord this morning. Now, Father, we ask that you would come on into the room and breathe on us this morning. Would you come in the room and breathe on us this morning? Breathe, breathe, breathe on your sons and your daughters. Breathe, breathe on your children this morning. Come in the room, God, and have your way, God. Let the wind of God hit this house. Let the peace of God hit this house. Let the healing of God hit this house. Rain on our fields this morning. Rain on the dry places this morning. Teach us by your word this morning. Father, we lift up Apostle Ken. We lift up him now, God, as we prepare to teach the world, God. We pray that the anointing rests on him. It makes teaching and preaching easy. We declare breakthrough this morning, God. We lift up our leaders. We're thankful for every visitor, God. We declare that you're walking in a visitor, that you're leaving us family. We thank you this morning, God, for breakthrough in the room, God. We pray now, God, that you will let your word fall and change it forever. That you will let your word go forth and change it forever. We bind all distractions now. We bind everything that will try to hinder the move of God this morning. We come against anything that will try to stop the flow of God. We ask now that you would reign here. We ask now that you would reign here. Rain, 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 rain. Rain, 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 rain. Rain, 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 rain. Let your presence fall. Let your power fall like rain. Rain on our dry places this morning. We ship the hop with our praise. We ship the hop with our worship. We bring the sacrifice into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice into the house of the Lord. Anybody thirsty this morning? Anybody hungry this morning? Anybody say, God, I need you. It's in you that I live. It's in you that I move. It's in you that I have my being. So now we ask that the fire of God would meet us in this room. Now we ask that the fire of God would fall in this house, God, in the name of Jesus. Throw your weight around this morning at the 11 o'clock hour. Throw your weight around and fall on your people. Throw your weight around and meet every need. Because when you come in the room, God, we know that you bring with us everything that we need. So we ask this morning once again that you would rain here. Rain on our fields, rain on our dry places. Go to those places, God. Shine the light this morning from the lighthouse. Shine on us this morning. Illuminate those places by your word. Illuminate those places by your word. Pluck up everything that's not like you. 
We declare this morning healing. We declare this morning breakthrough. We declare this morning salvation. We declare it. Somebody's in need of a breakthrough. And we declare breakthrough in the house. We declare breakthrough in the house. I dare to put your hand on your heart and declare breakthrough. Breakthrough in the mind. Breakthrough in the mind. Breakthrough in the minds of your people. Breakthrough in the emotions of your people. Breakthrough this morning. Break out, Spirit of God. We declare it. We declare it. We declare it. Somebody's hungry. Somebody's hungry. We jump in the river of healing. We jump in the river of breakthrough. We jump in this morning. We declare healing, breakthrough, and deliverance, and it shall not be otherwise. Somebody said, I come with a mind to get my healing. I come with a mind to get it. What we need is in the room this morning. What you need is in the room this morning. I dare you to lift your hands in this house and receive it by faith. We reach up and grab it this morning. We reach up and grab it this morning. We reach up and grab it this morning. And before we go into worship, we say, have your way here, Jesus. Have your way here, Jesus. Have your way here, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our minds. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way this morning. For you said, let this mind be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the word that's going to heal our mind. We thank you for the word that's going to heal our emotions. We thank you for the word that's going to heal our mind. There's healing in the place. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Sweep through the room and throw your weight around. Sweep through the room and throw your weight around. Sweep through the room and throw your weight around. Oh, weight of God, let the fire fall. Let your glory fall. Sweep through the room. Sweep through the room. Sweep through the room. Sweep through the room. I get out. Sweep through the room. To sweep through the room. Sweep through the room. Sweep up everything that's not like you. Consume everything that's not like you. Have your way. 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 As we shift this house, we shift our minds. We shift our emotions. We shift ourselves. And we command ourselves to bless you. We thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. And we declare that it shall not be otherwise. We know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask of things. And we ask all these things in the master's name of our Lord. We ask all these things in the master's name of our Savior. Now clap your hands, shout hallelujah, and amen to the glory of God. Let's worship the King. Come on, worship Jesus all over this room. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, stand on your feet all over this room as we enter into worship. Come on, for the next 30 seconds, open your mouth and celebrate Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. That's it, that's it. We give you glory. Yeah, 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 Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. We worship you. We praise you. Now put your hands together all over this room and give your God a praise. Come on. Let the people of God give God glory. Come on, stand to your feet as we enter into praise and worship. If you really love Jesus, do me a favor. Hug three people and tell them, good to see you this morning. Welcome them home. And put your hands on it. Put your, put your hands on it. Come on. Y'all know what time it is. Come on. Put your hands on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We make you bigger. We shout your name. Yeah. We make you bigger. We shout your name. Everybody lift it up. Make you bigger. Hey. We shout your name. Make you bigger. Make you bigger. We shout your name. One more time. We make you bigger. Make you bigger. We shout your name. We shout your name. We make you. We shout your name. We 
shout your name. Sing as we love. As we love. On you. On you. Say receive our love. Come on, church. Receive our love. Receive our love. Receive our love. As we shout your name. As we shout your name. Receive our praise. Receive our praises. Let's do it one more time. Sing as we love. Let me hear you. Come on. Put your hands on it. Put your hands on it. Oh, put your hands on it. Put your hands on it. Receive our love. Oh, as we shout your name. Receive our praise. Receive our praises. Come on, 11 o'clock. Y'all wake up. Your name is high. Be glorified. Be glorified. No other name. No other name. Yes, sir. No other name. No other name. No other name, no other name like God. Your name is her. Yeah. Be glorified. Yeah. Be glorified. You, are you are great. That's it. You are great. Greatly to be praised. We lift your name. We make you bigger. We shout your name. Everybody sing it loud. Thank you. We shout your name. We shout your name. We make you bigger. Make you bigger. We shout your name. We shout your name. We make you bigger. Make you bigger. We shout your name. We shout your name. Sing as we love. On you, on you, on you. Receive our love this morning. We got love for you, Lord. As we shout your praises, yes, yes, receive our, receive our praises, receive our praises, here we go, say your name is high, your name is high, lift your voice, come on, come on, come on, no other name, no other name, yeah, yeah, no other name, yeah, yeah, no other name like yours, your name is high, be glorified, you are great. You are great. You are They're my hype team right there. We lift your name. We make you bigger. We shout your name. Everybody sing it good. We make you bigger. We shout your name. We shout your name. We make you bigger. Make you bigger. Shout your name. We shout your name. Thank you. Shout your name one more time. We make you bigger. We make you bigger. Make you bigger. We make you bigger. Make you bigger. We make you bigger. Make you bigger. We make you greater. Make you greater. Make you bigger. Make you bigger. Come on, help us make it big. Make you bigger. Make you bigger. Make you bigger. We shout your name. 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 Now everybody, put your hands on it. Come on. Come on. I don't hear your hands. Come on. Clap your hands. Come on. Come on. Your name is high. Say your name is high. Your name is high. Be glorified. Be glorified. No other name. No other name. No other name. No other name like yours. Your name is high. Your name is high. Be glorified. Be glorified. You are great. You are great. You are great. You are great. Greatly to. What you call it? Say, Lord, we come to lift you up. We come to lift you up. We give you praise. Give you praise and lift you up. In everything. Everything we lift you up. Yeah, your name is higher. Your name is higher than the world. Greater 
in the nation. We come to call him Jesus. Say, Lord, we come to lift you up. We give you praise. Everything. We come, Lord, we come to lift you up. 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 Above my problems. Above my sickness. Yeah, yeah. Lift you up. Lift you up. I come I come Lift you up. Lift you up. Lift you up. Lift you up. Everybody make some noise. Lift you up, 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 give you pray, give you pray, give you pray, give you pray, lift you up, lift you up, lift you up, somebody shout in the room. Lift you up, 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 Break me down one time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Tell him you're real quiet this morning. Tell him, but I got news for you. If you want praising, that's all right. I'll do it for you. Because I know how good he's been to me. I can remember how he brought me out. My only objective this morning is to lift him up. Now, you ask your neighbor real quick. Say, neighbor, if you don't mind. I need your help. Tell them if you can put your issues aside and what you brought with you aside and agree to help me lift him up. Ask them, can you agree with me? Can you help me do that? Y'all ready to do it? Cause it's gonna get crazy in here. Y'all ready? Come on, stand on your feet. Everybody in the room, we about to lift him. Y'all just sing it. Say lift you up, lift you up, lift you up, lift you up, from despair, from complication, from depression, lift you up, I come to, I come to, I come to, I come to, lift you up, lift you up, lift you up, lift you up, make you big, make you big, make you big, make you big. Make you be, make you be, make you be, make you be, make you great, 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 who be talking about? Chila, 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 somebody live Chila, 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 oh. Your name is high, be glorified. You are great, you are greatly to, greatly to be great. Your name is high, your name is high. Come on, lift your hands and say, no other name, no other, no other. Say, your name is high, be glorified. You are great. You are great. You are great. Great to be 
One more time. Your name is her. Be glorified. No other name. No other. Given unto men. See, your name is high. Be glorified. You are great. You are great. And greatly too. Say, we lift your name. Now somebody lift his name right here. Come on. Come on, come on. Not that churchy stuff. I'm talking about that relationship kind of praise. Come on, open up your mouth for all that he brought you through. For how he kept your mind. Oh, come on, that's it. Open. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. We give you glory. That's it. We almost said, we give you glory. Come on, open, open. That's it. Come on, break it. Break those walls. Come on, break it, break it, break it. Break it, break it, break it. Break it. Yes, God, yes, God. So we'll stand on his word. We do a lot of talking to encourage our community. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I come to remind you that the word of God is the only thing that will stand. Now find somebody behind you and tell them it stands forever. It stands forever. Now clap your hands right here. The party keeps going. That's it. Y'all sound good. Come on. The Bible says he teaches our hands to cut fight and our fingers to war. Come on. A simple song. We'll forever stand on your word and we'll forever trust in your word. We will forever believe in your word. It stands forever. It stands forever. Sing will forever stand on your word. Trust in your word, and we'll forever believe in your word. Sing it stands forever. It stands forever. And we'll forever stand on your word. And we'll forever trust in your word. God will forever believe in your word. Sing it stands forever. It stands forever. It stands forever. There is no other way. We have no other choice. We will put our hope in you. On every mountain top and on my stormy days. Lord, we will trust in you. Say, we have no other choice. No other choice. There is no other way. No other way. We will put our trust in you. Every mountain top on a stormy day. Come on, say, Lord, we will trust. We will trust Yes, sir. And we'll forever stand on your word. Stand on your word. And we'll forever trust in your word. Trust in your word. God will forever believe in your word. Believe in your word. Sing it stands forever. It stands forever. It stands forever. It stands forever. Yeah, we will stand on your word. Stand on your word. Anybody out there trusting in Jesus, trust in your trust in your word. Yeah, we will believe. Believe in your word. So it stands forever. It stands forever. It stands forever. It stands Yeah. 
But you gotta know it to trust it. Say, I know the way. I know the way. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with him. Be not aware it. In your own do it. True and the living God. Be the true and the living God. And in true 11 15. Listen, in, at 11 15, like normal, it sounds like somebody says, I stand on your word. I trust your word. I trust you. I trust you. Lift your voice and say, I trust your word. I trust your word. I trust your word. I'm standing because of your word. No, you 
won't get me caught up in that. No. But clap your hands one more time and say, I know your word. You are the word. You are the word. You are the word. You are the word. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 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 Well, good morning. Good morning, Connect Church Plano. Unapologetically known as Connect Church. Church Global, listen, you are in the right place to be on this Sunday morning. It is our honor, our privilege to welcome you here. For those of you who do not know us, my name is Desiree. And I'm Jerome. And like I said, it is our honor and privilege to welcome you here to one of the greatest churches in this region, Connect Church Global. We do not take it for granted that you are here. Listen, we know that some of you came here as guests, but we are believing by the time you leave here today, you will be leaving as family. So welcome home, welcome home. We do have a few announcements as to what's going on here at Connect Church Plano, starting with this Wednesday night. Jerome, what takes place on Wednesday? Now, y'all know what happens on a Wednesday. I'm going to say it every week the same way. It goes down on a Wednesday. Where are my midweek Bible study people? Where are those that are in the house on a Wednesday? Where are those that are changed every week because of the Word of God? We want you to be our guest this Wednesday at at, at, I will say 11.15, at, it, it, that's now. At 7.15 every Wednesday, it's not virtual, so you have to be in the house. You, we are inspired on Sundays, but we are growing on Wednesdays. And how many can say we are truly growing? Is there anybody say, I, I'm truly growing because of the word that's going forth by our apostle? Now listen, if you missed last week, I don't know what to tell you. You just ask somebody, ask Desiree, she takes the best notes. But if you were not here on Wednesday, you missed something. Apostle, I don't know if he drank extra energy drink. I don't know if he had his Wheaties. His, I don't know what he did. I don't know what this Popeye thing that came on him. He taught in an unusual way on a Wednesday, and we were forever changed. So would you be our guest every Wednesday at 7.15 for Bible study? That's rare these days. People are not having Bible study. People are not walking and fellowshipping together um, in the Word on a Wednesday, but we're stu still doing that here, and our apostle is breaking the Word of life every single week, and we want you to be our guest 7.15 on Wednesday. And where are all my homegirl sister friends at? All the gyms in the house. Listen, we are having our March meeting on next Saturday, March the 17th at 11 a.m. So bring your sister, bring a coworker, bring your mom, bring anybody and bring them here. And all your beautiful faces should be here at 11 a.m. next Saturday. Make your business to be here. It'll be a great time of fellowship amongst the ladies. And we are just so honored to have this opportunity to fellowship amongst each other. So again, next Saturday on at 7, 11 a.m., all your beautiful faces need to be here. Got it, got it, good. Listen, <laughs> and that we are a few weeks away from Easter Bowl Sunday. Listen, make some noise for that. Easter is a big deal here at Connect Church Plano. We call it our Super Bowl Sunday. So forget the NFL. Come and celebrate the true risen king here with us at Connect Church Plano. We are having three services, and we are believing God that 600 faces will be walking through those doors. And that happen. 100 lives are going to be saved. So listen, make sure you make it your business to be here on Easter Sunday. But with that, that being said, we need help. Would you we, please? we need help. We need help. I don't know if you heard me, but I said 600 faces are going to be walking through the door on Easter Sunday. So we need volunteers. So if you are looking to volunteer in a particular ministry, make sure you go inside the app and sign up using the volunteer sign up sheet. Make sure you do that. And we do have a volunteer meeting on this Tuesday at 7 p.m. You do not need to leave the comfort of your home. It will be via Zoom. So make sure you're in the app for that information as well. Now, where are all the dancers at? Where's the people to say, I'm a dancer, I love to dance, it's what I do. So, y'all, they shy. They're Pastor D wants y'all to know she's about that life. Where are the dancers? Where are those that say, we see you. Well, those that say, I would love to dance. I wish there was a dance ministry. I want to just do what I do, however I do it. We want you to know there's a liturgical dance meeting directly after the service with Brother Chris and Sister Danny for all those that are interested. So this is your opportunity to say, listen, I might want to hold a flag. I might want to do whatever it is. I think Aaliyah was pop locking earlier. I don't know if they're going to do that. But whatever, however it happens, however it goes down in the house, we want you to know that there's a meeting directly after service with Brother Chris Sister Danny, if you would meet them with Brother Chris and Sister Danny, if you would raise your hands. There's Brother Chris, Sister Danny, yeah, somewhere. But there's Brother Chris right there. If you would see them directly after service, if you're interested in that. Also, Sunday school. So, now, this is another one that's really not happening everywhere, y'all. We still have Sunday school. We still have Sunday school. Many of us are where we are because of Sunday school. Man, maybe we were drugged, man of God, but however it happened, we still, maybe that was just me, uh, we still went to uh, Sunday school, and it's happening here at Connect Church Global. Sunday school at 8 a.m., and we need you to be there. Brother, minister in training, Derek Hewlett, is 
about that life. He's going to be teaching on discipleship. You don't want to miss it. The man of God is a teacher, a great teacher. He teaches on the anointing, and it's the best time to learn about discipleship. So if you would join us at 8 a.m. on Sunday for Bible school, Sunday school, what's the Bible school? It is, you know what I'm saying, Sunday school. Yes, and just like we said earlier, Sundays we are inspired, but on other opportunities we have the chance to grow. So not only on Wednesdays, but on Sunday mornings before service as well. So make it your business to be here and get fed and learn the word. But listen, it is the month of March, y'all, and I don't know if you know, but it is our apostles' birthday month. It's a holiday. It is the whole month it's a we're going to celebrate. Listen, his birthday is on March 22nd. We are so thrilled with any opportunity we have to honor and celebrate him. So we are just so excited for what God's going to do in this next year of life. And I also, without acknowledging Apostle, I do want to acknowledge that it's also Pastor Billy's birthday this month as well on the 19th. So we're just so excited, for, like I said, to celebrate both of you this month, all month long. And we are so excited. Uh, and if there's any other birthdays in the month of March, we do celebrate you as well from your Connect Church family. Happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, Tariqa. Hello. Happy birthday. Okay. And with all oh, those are all the announcements we have. So like I say every Sunday, download the app. Download the app. Download the app. Do not miss anything going on here at Connect Church Plano. Get in the know. Create a profile. And do not miss out. You can get it in Google for my Android users. You get an Apple. You get an Amazon Roku. Get in there and get in the know. Without further ado, we're going to pass it to the angel of this house, our apostle, Ken Bennett. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Come on, let's do that. Come on, let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on. Come on, celebrate God. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Amen. Are you glad to be here? Y'all, um, I'm just thrilled to see what God is doing in this church and the lives of his people. Can you help me celebrate God for Pastor D, Dr. Dana Bennett? Amen. She's in the room. We bless God for her. She is going to, I'm going to ask solicit, to solicit your prayers. She's going to be traveling to Holland this week. Amen. Praise God in the Netherlands and doing the will of God there. So if you all could be praying for her as she travels uh, this week, if you want to support her, be a blessing to her, put some on a hotel or let her eat good. Uh, just, just, just holler at her, get her cash up information and be a blessing to her. Y'all mind doing that for me? Amen. Praise God. Listen, I'm excited to go with you guys in the word of the Lord. I do want to just make one special announcement. Where are all my men at? Where are all of my men? Amen. We failed to make mention that uh, I guess it's just two of us in the room. All right. Cool. It's cool. Um, <laughs> Monday night, uh, meet us for Monday night will be our men's uh, bold men uh, discussion. We have it every, is it third Monday? Fourth? Is this the fourth Monday? What is this? Oh, okay. Well, I think we missed last month, which is why we moved it up this month. Got it. So meet us on Monday night uh, to be a part of that. Y'all all right? Amen. Put your hands together for that, please. Please. Thank you. All right. I'm excited to go to the word of the Lord. Uh, we're going to find ourselves today over in the book of Matthew. Today we start a brand new teaching series uh, in call, uh, called Breaking Bad. Somebody shout, we're going to have to break up with bad. Um, and so this, this month, this teaching is really designed to speak to some of the cycles and habits that are going on currently in your life that could be hindering you from getting to where God ultimately wants you to be. Uh, as we began to pray about this teaching series actually months ago, we planned it a couple of months ago, unbeknownst to me that God very often sometimes will set up the room to be able to receive the instruction of that hour. So today, here's what I want to do. My objective today uh, is I, I, I need your mind in this moment. Look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor. hey neighbor, we need your mind in this moment. Come on, say it again. Hey neighbor, hey neighbor. we need your mind in this moment. This is so, so important. I need your mind in this moment because of where God is taking you and where you're headed. Uh, you can't let your heart get you in trouble. Amen. Somebody shout, I can't let my heart get me in trouble. So I need your mind this morning as we go into this conversation over the next several weeks. 
We're going to be unpacking several areas of your life that we're going to have to break those bad habits out of the way so that this can be the year that you have been praying for, that this is the season that you've been praying for, that God can really, really exalt himself in your life like you desire for him to do. Amen. Um, and so let's go to the word of the Lord. Matthew chapter number seven is where we're going to find ourselves today. Matthew chapter number seven. Uh, Matthew chapter number 7, we're going to be at verses 15 through verses number 20. Matthew 7, it is our custom to stand out of respect for the word of the Lord, reading of the word of the Lord. If you don't mind doing that, we're going to read together in concert if you do not mind. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 15 through 20. If you got it, say, I got it. All right, praise God. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 15 through 20. Uh, we're reading from the ESV translation of the Bible. I'd like for us to just read it together. I may drop, drop out, but you continue to read in concert. Ready, read. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Keep reading. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruit. You find that same statement in verse 16, you will recognize them by their fruit. So today, if you don't mind for the time in which we have together, I want to have a conversation about people habits. Everybody shout people habits. Come on, say it again. People habits. For some of us, we are addicted to people. We're addicted to people. We are addicted to a certain type of people. Uh, hence, while we probably are dealing with as much people drama as we're dealing with today. But prayerfully, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we're going to help you get delivered from the wrong type of people. Shout amen. 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 Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. This morning, uh, as I mentioned, we start a new teaching series entitled Breaking Bad. As I stated, it's always interesting to me that when the Lord gives me a word, sometimes it's months before, weeks before, uh, but he does something amazing as he sets up the room or the season to either compliment to the message or embrace the message. Um, and so I, I, I received text messages from someone yesterday after I had just trying to finish putting the final touches on the message on yesterday and then talking with a few others over the last couple of weeks. I know that this is the word of the Lord for this season as we prepare you for where God is taking you. Everybody shout, I'm going somewhere. I'm say it again, I'm going somewhere. I'm going. Come on, say it again, I'm going somewhere. When you know that you're going somewhere, it also means you have to be aware of the people who are going where you're trying to go. Amen, somebody. And so last week we talked about two important elements to the Christian journey. The first element we talked about was salvation. Everybody shout salvation. 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 The Bible says for the wages of sin is death, but what? The gift of God is eternal life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son so that whosoever would believe it in him would not what? Perish, but have everlasting life. If you confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart. Jesus is Lord. The Bible says you are what? You will be saved. So somebody shout, I got to get saved. I got to be saved. So salvation is important. Salvation is the act of being saved from the penalty of sin and its consequences by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Christ. So we're made righteous by faith in him. Second element in the Christian journey as it relates to your development is discipleship. Everybody shout discipleship. discipleship. Say it again, discipleship. So where salvation is the act of, discipleship is the process of. Discipleship is the process of following Jesus, being committed to him and what he values so you can live the life that he has called you to live. He said in his word when he spoke to his disciples, he says, greater works than these shall you do. He says, I'm going to go on and do what God has called me to do because my death is necessary for you to have any kind of chance down here. So you're going to be able to do greater works than, my, than what I have done because you are given more time than I am. Not that we'll be greater than Jesus, but we are able to do more than he did because he was only given 33 years. You're in your 40s and still ain't doing nothing. 
Okay, so discipleship is the process of while salvation is the act of. Now, put this down. It's important for you to know because we're going somewhere. I got to help you today. I, I'm, 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 I am. I've, I've got to somewhat engage. Now, we, we ain't going to do a whole lot of shouting today. I promise you. We, we won't be doing much shouting today. Whatever he just did. And that's why I said go ahead and give him a little bit more because it's about all you're going to get. Okay, Cause, cause, because in this moment, I really need your mind. Most of you are in relationships and you left your mind at home, okay? And, and then you're dealing with disappointment because uh, you trusted your heart instead of going with your mind, okay? And so what I'm going to do is help you today. So here's, here's what I got to say. While salvation um, is a God thing, discipleship is a community thing. While, sal while salvation is a God thing, discipleship is a community thing. Write that down. While salvation, if you're going to be on TikTok, just put me up and then post and look at, see who likes your posts. All right. While salvation is a God thing, discipleship is a community thing. You do realize that you don't have to, you can possibly be getting discipled in unholy works, unholy works. Right. Just because we're using the term disciple does not mean that we're being discipled to follow the values and the pattern of Jesus Christ. You can be discipled to follow the patterns of this world. So you need to understand that just because of proximity and where you live, somebody is always after trying to disciple you. You have to know that. You can't just release your heart and let just people speak or pour into you. You got to be careful because you are a container that, that, that someone has to pour into. So while salvation is a God thing, discipleship is a community thing. Say it together. Y'all got it? Let's say it together. Salvation is what? A God thing. All right, run it back one more time. I think I threw y'all off. Do it one more time. Run it back again. This brings us to an important insight. You need to know that effective discipleship thrives in community. Yet I have uh, discovered a common struggle, Dr. Dana, that I find among the Christian faith. Many of us are stuck in a cycle of trying instead of training. Many of us are stuck, I'm going to say it again, in a cycle of trying and God never asked you to try. He says you must train. So, so this is part of your issue is you have given yourself a pass to just keep trying. And trying is not enough. Training is crucial. This is why when Peter says in 2 Peter, 2 Timothy chapter 2, he says, study to show thyself approved. A workman needed not rightly dividing the word of truth. That's training because uh, Peter, uh, uh, Paul is talking to Timothy, rather, helping his spiritual son to understand that if you're going to speak on God's behalf, you need to be a professional. That there must be professionals in the pulpit to handle the word of God. So he says, you're going to have to train. You're going to have to be scholarly. You're going to have to be an apologetic. You're going to have to bring your mind to the stage. Because if you, br if you don't bring your mind to the stage, uh, you're, going to be, you're going to be very, very uh, attempted to seduce people with your own thoughts and your own ideologies, presenting a gospel that opposes the gospel that I printed, presented to you. And for some of us, we lack training. We lack training. See, I need you to understand, coming to church on Sunday morning is great. It's great. I'm so, put your hands together. Just thank God. Say, I made it to church today. I really was supposed to be here at 9.15, so I woke up late, but I, I got to church today. Put your hands together. Come on. Now, 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 now that you have gotten to church, this is good, but I cannot train you in just 35 minutes. Training takes place in community. It takes place in other settings where we can walk through the word of God so that we can bring your mind to the text. This is why Paul uh, deals with this importance of not neglecting community because it is, it is now go to Acts chapter 2 real quickly. I'm sorry. I, I feel my help. Let me go ahead and just teach this thing. Go to Acts chapter number 2. I was in the office falling asleep. I said, let me get out of here before they be looking for me. Now my help is in the room. Acts chapter 2. And I want, I want you to look at verse number 42. You got it? Say, I got it. 
Acts 2 says, ain't they what? Devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. You must understand that training comes through teaching and instruction. He says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and, look at that other word, fellowship. Fellowship, koinonia, Greek word, to the breaking of bread. When he says breaking bread, literally talking about breaking the bread of the word. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when you come to church on Wednesday night, we break the bread down. We break it down in a way that you can digest it, where you can understand it, so you can govern your life. But as long as you are used to candy messages, you're going to be stuck in a state of trying, and you'll never train. And what's going to happen is you're going to be saved a long time not having any real impact. Am I helping somebody today? So the problem with the 21st century church is uh, we got folk trying instead of training. And this objective, this message is really designed to help you understand, first and foremost, that training starts with spiritual formation. Training, let's say that training starts with spiritual formation. There is a stance, there is a standard, there is a posture there is a, a sense of expectation you must possess if you are really ready for training I've discovered people only want enough to get to heaven but not enough to change not enough to change not enough to change when they have to sit down and let somebody deal with their real issues this is when it becomes problematic and you say people are judging you when in reality if you understand the church and its intent really you're supposed to come to church and let people judge your life that's bible but because society has commuted a message that you just to do, get to do whatever you want to do and nobody gets to call you out on your business. And I'm trying to figure out how is it you can work for corporate America, do your nine to five, and they won't let you cut a fool. But you can come to church and cut a fool and get mad when we call you out on your business. That's training. See, see when, 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 when you're trained, you got to hear what's hard to hear. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you got to hear what's hard to hear. I told you that the gospel is, is offensive. The gospel will say things. See, when you study God's word uh, and you really understand God's word, there ain't no way you can read God's word and stay the same way you did before you read it. Am I helping somebody? Somebody shout, I need training. Come on, say it again. I need training. One more time. I need training. So, so let's talk about spiritual formation. I want to give you this real quickly. And I promise you, if you just hang with me, I'm really getting ready to hook you up. I promise you, I'm getting ready to hook you. Look at Jeff, he's about to hook us up. About to hook us up. You, you, matter of fact, the copay you was about to get, no, you know what? Go see your therapist this week. Give him the copay. But, but please see him because you need a therapist and Jesus. All right, so you need both of them. So no, I was going to say just give it to me. No, 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 because I don't want the call. Go to the therapist this week. I'm going to just do it. This is just free. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, glory to God. So let's start about the spiritual formation. All right. First, first phase of spiritual formation is salvation. Everybody shout salvation. Salvation. Sa salvation. Say it again. Salvation. Salvation. salvation means in order for change to happen, you got to get saved. Okay, that's the first start. That, that's the starting line with spiritual formation. It's to start, everybody shout, it's the starting line. You can't get in until you start with Jesus. You cannot get in until, look at everybody say, I can't get in until I start with Jesus. Right, this means you have to trust that what he did on the cross was sufficient enough to get you in. Now, as long as you're fixated on thinking you got to perform for Jesus, then it's going to be hard for you to embrace what Jesus has died for because you think that your relationship with God is predicated on what you do when it's predicated on what his son did. 
This is why when Jesus ascended into the heavens, the Bible says that the veil was rent from the what? Top to the bottom, which means now you can come boldly to the throne of grace to attain help in the time of need. It is now because of what Jesus has done, you can come to God for yourself. But here's the thing, when you go, you got somebody you can use as a co-signer. Your co-signer is Jesus, which means you can leverage his positive credit up against your bad credit. It's, Lord, help me today. So when God pulls the report, he don't see your report. He sees the report of a sacrificial lamb. Somebody shout, you got to get saved, though. All right, number two. Number two. This is a big one. We don't like to see this, particularly in church, which is amazing to me. You, you, you can't go and just take a, a top-notch position in the world and not be degree, for the most part. Some of us got favor. We've been moved in, we've able to, been able to move into opportunities and just, just experience and history, who you know and all of that. But for, for the most part, my wife has been in, in corporate America over 20 years and, and have climbed the ladder. And I believe that while she has the favor of God, while I believe she's smart, while I believe she's intellectual, while I believe she knows how to manage people, but the key to the door was her education. And see, mo I don't know why I'm going here, but, but, but for some of you in the room, you think that tongues is enough to get you through the door. <laughs> okay, see, got quiet, got quiet. I know I just offended somebody. You won't finish what you started. And you have to understand the way corporate structures are set up, they have investors they have to answer to. So when they put positions in place, they have requirements that say they must have this. Now, if the world requires that, I'm trying to figure out how did you become an elder so quickly when you just got saved last week? I'm trying to figure out how, how that happened. How, did, how, did, how are you apostles such and such making your own oil and you, you don't even know three good scriptures? Okay, so, so, so not only must one be saved, he has to be educated. I, I know, I know, because you thought just being smeared in oil was sufficient enough, and you got a lot of people who've been smeared in oil and still don't know the word. Okay, so you got to be educated. This is where education takes place. This is where we can get in trouble. Education happens in a church community. You need a church home because as long as you try to do your spiritual work by yourself, you have nobody to run that up against. You have nobody to balance your theology. Okay, it's quiet. I, I know you've been able to do your own thing all your life and you just, you've been, I've been done bad by myself. I don't need, that don't work in church. Because if you are going to be anything or if you're going to jump to the degree where God wants you to be, it happens within church community. It is dangerous to say you love Jesus but hate his church. I'm trying to figure out how that's going to be because the Bible said that Jesus is the head of the church. So how is it you want Jesus but not his body? Okay, that's, that's equivalent to saying I love Pastor D and, 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 and Pastor Ken, but I hate their children. Wait a minute, boo. They are whole, they're a part of the package. So if you want us, you get them. Okay, so, so you, you can't say you love Jesus and you're saved, but you are not a part of the entity that he is the head over. So you got to be educated. That happens in church community. Known cornonia, fellowship. All right. So you got to be educated. Somebody say, I got to get educated. And you can't get educated by yourself. You need a church home. Um, all right. And we'll just keep going in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Fruition. Everybody shout fruition. fruition. Come on, say it again. Fruition. fruition. Which means... You, if you sit here long enough, I can tell who trains you. If you sit under teaching or the teaching you sit under, I can tell who's training you. And because it manifests 
in your life. It manifests in your activities. It, it manifests, watch this, in your decisions. Your decisions are influenced by who trained you. You didn't just come to your own decision. Someone helped you reach a conclusion. You've, you've taken the intel and the information. You judged it and decided based on lopsided information, this is truth. Okay, so, so, so you got to bear fruit. Somebody shout, I got to bear fruit. Don't say you love Jesus and you ain't got no fruit to indicate that you are with Jesus. I'm sorry, just don't go together. All right, number, I got, I got, I got a lot to go. Let's, number four, let me just move this thing along. All right, number four, number four, somebody shout number four, number four. is examination. Examination, which means uh, what God will do is allow someone who loves you to examine you. Now, I'm trying to figure out, once again, I'm tired, so I can, you know, when I, when I start getting a little tired now, now I can really talk to y'all. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out, how is it that you can go to the doctor and the doctor can see all of you, who you just met? Okay, see, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, I got, I got, who you just met, who you just met, and you see, you, and you barely do any investigation on whether or not they legit or not. You go with the intention that because he's got a professional office, he's got a location, he got an assistant at the front, front and he's got a doctor's coat on, that somehow he's experienced in dealings of sickness. So what you do is you get in the doc, doc, I hadn't been bitten good and that, just, and you just start taking your clothes off. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you can go and take your clothes off in the presence of a stranger, how is it that if I'm your pastor, how is it that if this is your church where you get education, that I don't know what you're dealing with? Okay, it got quiet, it got quiet. I tell the leaders all the time in this church, just so you know, you don't get fired for sin in this church. You get fired for lying about sin. I need to know all my kids. I need to, I know she did it. I know she did. But there is a relationship that we have, y'all ain't said nothing to me, where they have disclosed intel and information that they trust me as a spiritual surgeon to handle. But here's what happens. Y'all come to church for prescriptions on Sunday and avoid surgery on Wednesday. And this is why you need a fix. It's because you just are tripping off of prescriptions when in reality the prescription is designed to anesthetize you for a season. But there comes a time where we got to do surgery so we can get that infection. Y'all ain't talking back to me. So, 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 so you got, what's number one? Salvation, number two, education, number three, fruition, number four, examination, examination which means uh, you got to confront what's in you. You got to confront what's in you. We are not here to keep lying to you. You got enough friends to do that for you already. We, that, that, ain't, that ain't what we do. Anyway, we're not here to just put lipstick on you and say, go out there and be great. That ain't why we're here. We're here to help you reach the best version of who God wants you to be when you enter into this community, because that's the only way you discover God, find community, and tap into your purpose. But your purpose is on delay because you don't let nobody examine you. You're not in any women's meeting. You're not at a men's meeting. You're not in a singles group. You're not in the couples group. You're, you're not a part of the young adults group. You are just here on Sunday for prescriptions because you're an addict. And this is just designed to get you high. But there comes a time when the high is over and you got to face the reality of your life. So we're getting high right now. 
You hungry yet? So number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? Number four is what? Number five, operation. All right, operation. Now, operation means that after examination, we're not going to have to help get you to where you can operate in what you say you believe. Operation. It is the practice of righteousness. You are not lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in. Only half of y'all are lean in. Everybody lean in, lean in, lean in. I know you sleep, mother. Just lean in anyway. <laughs> lean in, lean in. <laughs> now you'd have made me forgot. Stop leaning. I forgot what I was going to say. I forgot. I missed a moment. I missed a moment. What was I getting ready to say? Operation. Practice, practice, practice righteousness. Yeah, there it is, there it is, there it is, what she just said. You're going to have to practice righteousness. You're not going to luck up on living right. You decide to live right. And when you decide to live right, Holy Spirit will partner with you to help you live right. Amen, somebody. Holy Spirit will walk alongside you. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to overexert himself. He's not going to overreach. Uh, he's not going to go over your will. You have to decide that you want help. Just like going to the doctor, getting a prescription feel, you need to take your behind to the, to, the, to the, what's the place, the CVS or wherever it is, get it filled, then you still ain't done. Because then you got to take no, y'all, see, that's the problem. You don't read the instructions. The instruction says for a season you can't encounter certain people. For a season you're going to have to decide that you're not going to be able to dial that number for a season. For a season. Oh, I'm talking better than y'all are saying amen in this room. So you don't read the fine print. So, 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 so operation, you got to practice righteousness. Number six, are we good? Number six is manifestation. Amen, just minimus, all right? Got it, got it. Manifestation. Tired, I got to move on. Manifestation. Manimus, okay? You got it, you got it. Manimus. That's the word we just made up in church today. Man of myths. All right, manifestation, <laughs> it is you must represent him or represent him in a notable way. Okay, when you get saved, educated, bear fruit, confront what's in you, operate and, and move in the operation, then quite naturally it's easy to produce fruit. Does that, that, does that make sense? Be, because of my relationship with Christ, because of the time that I spend with God, because of the, the seasons where I'm in, I don't have to wait to January to go on a consecration. No, because I know me, I know when too much flesh is in the way. So like Paul, I put my flesh under subjection and say, okay, flesh, since you're being a little too carnal, what we're going to do is we're going on a fast. And we're putting the flesh under subjection because you're, you're living in this world. Paul said there's no way you can live in a, this foul world and not come in contact with some kind of sin. And so because you know that, then you got to put yourself on a fast. You got to put yourself in consecration. You have to tell yourself, I'm stepping back for a season. You got to say, I can't talk to you for a season because you're influencing my will. And, and I got to follow the will of another. And that will ain't your will. It's his will. So I got to put myself. But because you only fast to be religious. 
That's why you don't get no benefit from it. Go ahead and eat. Am I helping you today? The, 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 I don't know why I'm dealing, this is totally different from what I just said in the first service. It's amazing how God works this thing out. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, you awake? You need training. All right, 15 minutes left. Let's look at this. Put this up on the screen. Let's define what spiritual formation is. Spiritual formation is the intentional effort to partner with Jesus by adopting his lifestyle, not just his belief system. You can believe in Jesus and he not be Lord in your life, which is why confession, he says, you must make him Lord and Savior. We have enough faith to believe that he saved us, but not enough faith to believe he can change us. So you must believe not only in his belief system, but you must also adopt his lifestyle. His lifestyle, not just his belief system, but his way of life, his truth, in order to let him form us into a particular shape, into Christ-like love. Somebody say, I just want to look like Jesus. Say, I just want to look like Jesus. All right, all right. So, so the, let, I, I said, I had you say that so I can tell you this. The church then is not a con job. You are not here for us to just apply lipstick on what you refuse to confront. Because here's the truth. Step one and two are, right, uh, 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 put this in your notes. These two are experiential. They're experiential. Everybody shout, step one and two are experiential one more time step one and two are experiential now step three through six this way y'all get in trouble is relational okay okay we're going somewhere just 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 work with me for just a few moments step one through six is predicated on who's in your life I'm gonna say that one more time step Three through six is predicated on who's in your life. The problem with modern Christianity, particularly within a westernized context, our society emphasizes personal faith at the expense of communal faith, which suggests that you don't need nobody to walk with you. Personal faith means you can be saved and not have a church. Personal faith means you don't have to have nobody in your life that you can be accountable to. Whereas communal faith is designed, this is why we check on you because we want to see your face. Because we can only discern so much through text message. So when you walk through the doors of the church, Pastor Billy can look at you in your face and tell that there's something off. And then through community, we encourage, build up, edify, glory to God, and help you get on the track where God wants you to be. But as long as you're trying to be a single project, working on yourself, you'll never get to where God wants you to be. Question I asked Elder Deke many years ago, how that working out for you? How is that working out for you? Since you are a solo project and nobody can tell you anything, and because you're an only child, that's what you've been allowed to get away with. It's nobody has to tell you anything when in reality that's not what real life is like. We all have someone we must answer to. We are all under authority. Okay. Okay. So, so, so this, this is... Go to, go to Matthew 7. This is where we at. I got 11 minutes. Jeez, jeez. Man, man. No, because then they're going to fuss that I took too long. So you got me in. Whoever said you got me in trouble last week. I can't, I can't listen to you because I got in trouble in our staff meeting. I was too long-winded. All right? So, so amen. I got to be accountable too. All right. This is, as this idea of relational discipleship, step three through six, it's purely relational. This is precisely where we land in the text, which is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount found in the Gospel of chapter Mark, chap, uh, um, chap, uh, Matthew chapter 5, all the way through verses chapter number 7, uh, is one of the most comprehensive pieces um, in Christian literature in Jesus' teachings 
uh, in the New Testament. It, prep, it, it really does uh, uh, present the core of Jesus' ethical, ethical and moral teachings that, that, that are designed to lay a strong foundation for Christian discipleship and spiritual formation. When you exa examine the crowd that Jesus is speaking to, if you look at this Sermon on the Mount carefully and look at where he's located, he's got a diverse audience. He's got disciples, he's got seekers, he's got skeptics, and then he's got the simply curious. It is this setting, it is extremely important because it's not just geographical, but it is symbolic. It's symbolic because it's making a shift from the old covenant to the new covenant. Uh, from Moses receiving the law on Mount Sinai to Jesus uh, reinterpreting these laws to redefine what it means to live out the laws in the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus starts this Sermon on the Mount with what's known as the Beatitudes, right? The Beatitudes. Then he turns societal expectations on its head by blessing those that society very, very often overlooks or oppresses. He then establishes a strong theme of valuing internal virtue over external achievement, which means that God's favor is not synonymous on the stuff you have outside of you. God's favor is synonymous on your relationship with him and what's happening inside of you. But if you're not careful, you will, subject, you will think that blessings are synonymous with God's okay with your life, when in reality, that's stuff you're producing on your own. You don't need God to do that. You need God to work inside because this is an inside job, not an outside job. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so this Sermon on the Mount begins with the Beatitudes, turning societal expectation. Then he establishes a, a theme of internal virtue by like loving people you don't agree with. Uh, what, like, 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 like being able to do life with people who are in a struggle you used to be in. That's an internal virtue. So, so Jesus, as he moves through the essence of the law, moves through the essence of trust and prayer and judgment, he then culminates this powerful sermon on a lesson on relational discernment. If you read chapter 7, 15 through 20, you will discover that he, he lays the groundwork of everything that I just said and then says, let's talk about your discernment with people. He says, because he understands that it will be people that determine what you produce. I can always tell where you're headed by who you hang out with. Okay, okay, okay. So, 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 so Jesus gets through this thorough process and this, this backdrop is crucial for really grasping what he's about to teach next. Um, and, and, and here's what I got to say. Um, an, a, a central to spiritual formation is the influence of people who you let enter your life and exit your life. I'll say that again. What is key to spiritual formation is who you let in and out. I'm going to say it one more time. What's key to spiritual formation is who you let enter your life and who you let exit your life. You don't recognize that as long as you're down here, you're going to have entrances and exits. And here's the problem, you get, you get, you, 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 you get overpressed, oppressed, and you get overwhelmed when you thought that an entrance was long term, when it was really short term to train something in you, but you fell in love with a short term relationship that you thought was long term, and you didn't recognize that it was just there for a season, but because you was lonely looking for company, you didn't know how to decipher the difference between somebody who's short term and long term. And if you learn how to live your life in managing who's short-term and who's long-term, you won't get surprised when they exit. Oh, I'm going to teach this thing like I feel it in my spirit. You won't get hung up when they exit because the Holy Ghost will let you know who's long-term and who's short-term. Am I helping somebody today? So look at what Jesus does. He gives us, um, as you will, uh, uh, a compass, uh, a guide, uh, a process, uh, a structure wherewith we can determine who's short-term and who's long-term. 
I'm going to help you today. So he starts off first in verse 15. He uses a term that is extremely important. He says, beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. And look at what he says. He, get, he, he reveals motive. He says, who come to you in sheep clothing, which means they are in disguise. <laughs> they, they almost look like sheep. But if you are discerning and you look in a little closer, you got to look at their fruit and not their garments. Lord have mercy. But because you're so into labels and brands uh, and you think he got money and you don't realize he broke anyway because you decided to judge at the outside uh, instead of looking at the inside. He ain't paid nobody's child support. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. They looking for him right now. But because he cute. He smelled good. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Four divorces under his name. And you about to be the fifth one if you don't get your head in the game and wreck. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Am I helping somebody today? We coming into that thirsty season. Y'all know how you get. Your belly's out, your back's out, your legs out. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Summertime is loading, and I'm here to help somebody today. That was free. So he says, verse 15, beware. of false prophets <laughs> beware of false prophets if, if, if you're going to become who you're supposed to be I'm not going to live that one down just share the whole context guys don't just take 15 seconds I just the whole context Lord help me today if we're going to become who we're supposed to be in Christ we must embrace the notation y'all ready for this that the greatest uh, that our greatest pain and our greatest pleasure will come from the same place. You want to know what it is? People. Your greatest pain and your greatest pleasure will come from the same place. People. Y'all can be madly in love today and cussing each other out next week. What happened to us being in love? But I can't just do nothing without you. Who you just, you just my answer to prayer. Who I just been waiting. You out to lunch with your boys telling you, man, she can cook. Find out she ordered takeout. <laughs> what, what, what happened? What happened? The greatest, she said that's unfortunate. <laughs> got to do what you got to do. Pimp your ride, amen, in Jesus' name. But sometimes your greatest pain and your greatest pleasure will come from the very same place, which is people. And so when Jesus makes mention of the analogy of wolves and sheep, he highlights the necessity of careful judgment in whom we allow close to us. This is a cornerstone to spiritual formation that is designed to shape your growth and your character. This directive, watch, watch out, emphasize the importance of an active and engaged mind, which means you can't do life with people leaving your mind at home. I'm going to help. I'm, 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 I'm really trying to help the people of God today. I'm trying to tell you, your problem is it's not that you miss God. You just left your mind at home. You out on dates and you left your mind at home, but you took your body with you. And so sometimes your mind needs support. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And sometimes because you, you like the little gangs in your mind, sometimes you need to bring in communal support and say, hey, I'm going on a date with somebody I just met off of Swipe Left or whatever it was, whatever that website is. And, and, and just because his profile picture looks perfect, you find out he got false teeth.
you find out that this ain't shaking and baking the way it's supposed to be. Because you went for a profile picture instead of investigating. And see, when real friends love you, they're going to say, hold on, girl, just a second. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me look, see what's going on here. But because you're thirsty and you're lonely and you want company. I'm just trying to help save you some of your counseling and therapy sessions if you just bring your mind to the table. Okay, and, and here's another thing. When you understand that your greatest pain and your greatest pleasure will come from the same people, same place which is people then you also recognize that when God is sending someone in your life to train you oh boy because you did we have to look at that on the other side that if our greatest pain and our greatest pleasure is from the same place then God will then use people to train us so we can appreciate the next relationship that enters or exit our lives is, is this is this helping y'all today Okay, um, what to do in Jesus' name? What to do in Jesus' name? All right, give me three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. Okay, go to 2 Peter chapter 1, three minutes, because I can't give you what I need to give you until I give you this. Okay, all right, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm work through it real quickly. 2 Peter, I think, one, 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 21, look at it real quickly. He says, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, which means he's helping us understand that anytime God does a job, no one then just make up, the, uh, decide for themselves to speak on behalf of God. Everything that was produced, it was ordered by God. He says, so in this text, prophecy was never produced by the will of man. You can't take credit for what God has declared. He says, but men spoke from God as they were carried by the Holy Spirit, which means uh, sometimes, especially false prophets, they can keep talking when God has stopped talking. He says, you got to let the Holy Spirit carry this thing through. And when the Holy Spirit is done talking, you stop talking. Okay, then look at chapter 2, verse 1. He says, but false prophets are also among those, the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift, swift destruction. And many will follow, look at this, their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And their greed will exploit you with false words. He says their condemnation from long ago is not idle. And their destruction is not asleep. It's important because Peter reminds us that true prophecy never originates from the will of men. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so what he does is he warns us of false teachers like their Old Testament counterparts who in introduce destructive heresies and indulge in immoral behaviors, misleading people away from the truth. The problem for truth today, it's on a sliding scale. That's the problem. And I want you to understand that because truth is on a sliding scale, our culture is, is shifting standards. And this is important because what used to be modest, what used to be appropriate, what used to be moral, and what was clearly cut out there front and center is no longer so. And so society views on sexuality, violence, and greed is now increasingly fluid, often measured by what we like instead of what he said and this is the intel and the motivation of a of a false prophet a false prophet is looking to sway you based on what you want to hear am I helping you today does this make sense are y'all with me right now so Peter's concern is that their denial of Christ return and the judgment that it entails along with the promotion of immorality and syncretism with other religious Greco-Roman cultures has created a problem. When you look at Matthew 7, Pastor D, and then you look at 2 Peter chapter 2, you find something extremely important that you must understand when it comes to your walk of faith in God. Our impact in the world. Y'all ready for it? This is my final thing. This is my final thing. Our impact in the world, I'm going to give it to you, and we're going to pick this up on next week, is determined 
by IQ, EQ, RQ. Write that down. If we understand that our lives are determined by who enters in and out of our lives, then we need IQ, EQ, RQ. IQ, mental intelligence, the ability to reason. You know two and two ain't adding up. You know stuff, it just ain't shaking out. That's IQ. Then emotional intelligence, EQ. That's the governance of your emotions and the emotions of others in an effort to guide your actions towards an appropriate decision, EQ. Thirdly, RQ, that's relational intelligence. So when you have IQ and you have EQ, you need RQ, that's relational intelligence. And while Jesus does not explicitly use the term IQ, EQ, RQ, the essence of his message does encapsulate the need for a holistic approach to relate relationships, recognizing that it's not just what people say, but what their actions reveal about their character. Is this making sense today? I'm going to give you the definition of RQ, and then we close in right here. Relational intelligence is the ability to discern if someone should be a part of our lives and what place they should be occupying. I'm going to say that one more time. Relational intelligence is the ability to discern if someone should be in our lives. And if they are, where do they belong? The problem is you treat everybody the same. You get everybody the same access. Lord have mercy. When you really look at the life of Jesus, he created everybody the same, but not everybody had the same access. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. You got to align people accordingly. Okay, verse 16, he says you will recognize them by their fruit. So verse 16 says to me, and I, I know this might be difficult for those of you in this room to hear, but although everybody should be loved, look at your neighbor and say, I love you. Come on, tell him again, I love you. Then tell him, I value you. Come on, say it again, I love you and I value you. But let's be honest, I don't know you. I don't know you. Since I don't know you, then I have the job of discernment to properly categorize you in my life. Which means when people enter and exit, they must enter in with a tag in your mind. You got to tag your relationships because any relationship that is untagged will create a miserable mess for you later. And that's the problem for some of you in this room because you wanted people, because you wanted company. You didn't properly tag people. You thought they were long term when really they were just short term. So you got to have IQ, EQ, and RQ. This week, as you go back out there into the world and you meet new people. As a matter of fact, you, you ought to do the job today going through your phone, all your contacts, and just say, God, where do they belong? Where do they belong? You're going to have to, and this is important. The reason why we're having this critical conversation today is because more is coming to you. But if you're not careful, you will be, you will be giving what you should be holding on to, to the wrong person. And the wrong person will come take and not reciprocate. Am I helping you today? So somebody just say, Lord, give me RQ. Come on, say it again. Lord, give me RQ. Lord, I know we grew up together, but the season has shifted. I, I know we best buds. I know we homegirls. I, I know we work together. I know, but, but, but for where God is taking me, we're going in two different directions. You notice RQ even between Moses, Abraham, and Lot. RQ. RQ demands that Abraham, although he had a problem with RQ, because when he was told to leave his country, his kindred, take nobody but your family, your wife, but Lot went with him. 
which means there are going to be people who attach to you like a leech and then make your life miserable. And you're trying to figure out why is there no joy? And I'm going to help you next week. That's why you got to come back, be on time, because I'm going to help you define the categories you need in our queue. But there are people who are only got one intention, to drain you dry. Drain you dry. Make your life a living hell. Ain't got no joy. You, your stress goes up the moment the text goes through. But because you need to be needed. Because you need company. Because you need to practice your gift. You entertain somebody who don't even respect your gift. Oh, Lord, look at y'all looking at me. Look at you. You got to get our key. Stand to your feet all over this room. I want to pray for you. I pray this helped you. I, help, I pray, I pray this, this is the word you needed to hear. Because some of you all said to yourself, I think I'm going crazy. I think I'm going crazy. I think... I don't know how I miss it. I, I, I thought I heard God. I, th I, thought, I, thought, I thought this was it. And you discovered it's a counterfeit. It's a counterfeit. It's something portraying to be something that is really not worth. And when it's time to cash it in, you're on your way to jail. Because you are not discerning enough to know the difference between the two. And I'm here to tell you today, church people, we love everybody. We're called to love everybody. But if you really, really look at the life of Jesus, you find that he categorically placed people. And from those places, he was able to serve them. Your problem is you got distant people who need to be close. And you got close people who need to be distant. And because you got the wrong people in the wrong place, you're hearing information that is not crucial to your spiritual development as anything is contributing to your spiritual demise. So you got to recalibrate your relationships. You got to look at where people are in your life. Go through your, you don't need that many friends. Because what I've discovered, the, the higher you climb, the, the less friends you got anyway. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I see in the spirit, some of you in this room, I literally saw in the spirit, no joke, didn't see this in the first service. I literally saw you guys lifting off as an eagle. And as you was lifting off as an eagle, I literally saw things dropping from the eagle's mouth. So I don't know who that is for, but as you lift off, be okay with stuff dropping. Be okay with stuff dropping. It's okay. It's supposed to drop, watch this, to make you lighter to soar. You're too heavy to climb. You've been trying to carry ideas, personas, perceptions, and, and issues that you're going to have to drop in order to climb. There's a reason why they weigh your baggage before boarding the plane. Because they know the capacity of the plane and they don't want anything to hinder the plane from getting to its ordained destination. But because you need people to climb with you, you need company. And I'm trying to tell you, you're going to have to do weight assessment and weight management to see, are you too heavy? Doesn't make them a bad person. It just could mean they're too heavy for you and your capacity in this season. That's not an absence of love. No, that's discernment. Because here's the thing, the best, the worst thing you can do is bring somebody close that you don't have the time to mentor and nurture. And then you drop them and then they become injured by you now. But when you don't know your capacity, when you don't know your own personal limitations, when you don't know what you can and can't have. You got too much. You got bills. You got children. You got a marriage. You got this and the third that's on your mind. How are you trying to be a counseling to all of your, counselor to all of your best friends? For a season, you can't. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means now is not a good time. It's not a good time. And, and that can be your response. It's not just practice and say it. It's not a good time.
That's, that's it. That's it. No further explanation necessary. It's not, a, I just got laid off my job. It's not a good time. I just suffered a, suffered a devastating loss in my family. It's not a good time. It's okay. It's not, I'm going through a divorce. It's not a good time. I'm struggling financially. I love you, baby, but it's not a good time. It's okay to disappoint somebody else at the expense of your peace. What is important to me right now is my peace, not your personal happiness. Which means I may have to say no today just because I need peace in my life. And if we all got to a place where we worked on our independent individual relationships and reassessed what we can and cannot handle, we probably wouldn't need prescription meds to go to bed at night. I want to pray for you. Every eye close. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit speaking to us in, in a way that is extremely clear that we recognize your voice. There, there are people in this room, various seasons of their lives. God, I don't know the, the integral content or the, 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 the issues that reside in their personal circumstances, but Lord, you know because you know all things. So Father, in this moment, I pray for your people. People in this room dealing with all kinds of issues, relational issues, grief, suffering, sickness in their physical body, sickness of loved ones. God, let us do a recalibration, a reassessment of our capacity so we can serve in this season at an optimal level. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that this word would be brought near front and center of their lives this week, that they would be reminded of this truth, Lord God, that you give them relational intelligence. So, Father, I pray for your people today. You know where each and every one of them are. There's some in this room, Lord God, that have relationships that disappointed them and they decided that they would no longer do church or people. I pray that you heal right now in the name of Jesus, that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus, that Lord God, that this would be the last day that they make a decision to not do people, but Father, they will muster up the courage, muster up the faith to know, Lord God, that it is not good for man to be alone. So, Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that, God, that you would begin to touch, that you would begin to heal, that you would begin to fix, that you would begin to just download in their spirit who belongs close and who needs to be distant. So, Father, in this moment, as we worship, as we worship for just a few moments, I just want you to get it on your mind. Just worship for just a few moments. Come on. Just worship as the Lord speaks to you. I just want you to worship in this moment and ask God to show you, to show you who it is. Come on.
way I just heard it. There's somebody in this room, your challenge in relationships that you don't have the wrong, you don't have the right people in your life to walk alongside with you to help you discern the truth from error. And in this room, as I mentioned, we all need community. It's the only way we're going to survive relationally. And you're out here all by yourself. Love Jesus, big heart, great gifts. But you have nobody in your life that can support you in your walk of faith. I just heard the Lord say, do it now. There's somebody in this room. If you would really listen to the voice of the Lord, you're supposed to make a decision to make this your church home today. This is your altar call moment that you need to come home. You need to make a decision to say, listen, I'm out here all by myself. I don't have community. And I recognize that I've been trying to do this in my own strength, whether you're online or in this room. We want to open the doors of the church and extend Connect Church as an opportunity where you can come home. If the Lord is speaking to you at this precise moment, I want you to get your belongings and I want you to get your stuff. And I just want you to come down to this altar so we can receive you today as family. Will there be one? Will there be one in this room? If I'm talking to you, get your belongings. Make your way down to this aisle. You know I'm talking to you. If that's you, if that's you, come. If that's you, come. There's one. There's, there he is. There's one. There's one. Bible says you add it daily and so father in the name of Jesus I pray for these persons I pray Lord God for their journey I pray God that you would use us Lord God to show us who show them who they are in you Lord God the season of loneliness comes to an end because they now have community so father we celebrate you and we give you the praise and the awesome opportunity we thank you for the privilege of doing life with these individuals in Jesus' name. Will you all leave your seat and come and love on these individuals? Come, you just come, 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 wherever you are. Come. of life can come do what? Discover God, find community, and embrace their purpose, and we're excited that we get to do life together. Come on, put your hands together once again for what God continues to do. Listen, in this moment, we have an amazing weekend coming up that is approaching Easter Bowl Sunday, Easter Sunday. Can we thank God? Easter Sunday, we're believing 600 people. Come on, 600 people. We'll walk through the doors of this church on Easter Sunday over three experiences. You have 8.30, 10.30, and 12.30. We all have to adjust to make room for God adding and growing this church. And so, listen, I want to ask you to partner with us. We want to take this time. We're moving into an area of worship through giving. This is an opportunity where we can commit our tithe, give our offerings. I also want to make mention 
that in one week last weekend can we put it up on the screen our objective for the heart of the house C was we're believing God to raise twenty thousand dollars we're over our halfway mark can we give God praise for that twelve thousand six hundred dollars has been received if you have not been able to partner with us there are things that we want to do specifically in the area of evangelism we want to evangelize this entire city we want to make the, it the funnest day for our children ever, praise God. So they have their own unique work, worship experience, game trucks for the young adults. It is going to be a tremendous weekend, but the only way we do what God has called us to do is through your financial support and partnership. So I'm asking you, this is above your tithe and your offering. Help us make Easter Sunday the biggest day of the year where we can evangelize the city of Plano, Texas and reach this entire county for the glory of God. If you believe that, come on, put your hands together and say, we're going to do this thing. We're going to do this thing. We're going to do this thing. And so listen, we want to take a moment first, receive the tithe. The tithe is the first 10% of your income. We don't tithe because we have to. We tithe because we get to. It is our response to the love of God. God demonstrated his love for us by sending us his son who would be a perfect sacrifice. So he gave him to us so that we can then enter into a relationship with him. Our response to that is that we commit the first part of our increase to him. The Bible says you cannot serve God and man. Come on, talk back to me. You cannot serve God and mammon. And so the way we put mammon in check is we start with God, we give him the first part of our increase and trust him with the rest. Amen? The Bible says that the first part is holy, the entire lump is holy. Praise God. So this is where we get our 10%. If you're going to be giving your tithe today, lift your hands so we can celebrate God for you in this room. Come on, let's thank God. Come on, let's praise God for these individuals who are tithing. If you're watching online, you can follow the instructions there. At the bottom of the screen, you can give the various ways behind me or on the screen. Every other person, you can participate by giving an offering. An offering is simply a thank you of any amount to support the mission and the objectives of this ministry so that we can do what God has called us to do. That's the only way this vision takes place if you do your part. Amen? So we want you, if you need an offering envelope or if you want to give give te through technology the instructions are behind me on the screen every other person help us the heart of the, the heart of the house seed uh, sow your seed of a significant amount to help us reach our objectives praise God so we can make it the biggest day of the year amen I want everyone to stand to your feet all over this room so I can pray over your gifts amen hallelujah hallelujah I'll give you a minute I'll give you a minute did God move in a powerful way today? Amen. Praise God. He always has a way of giving us a word when we need it. Praise God. Lift those seed. I want to pray over it, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to not only sit in this service, but God, we demonstrate our response to you by giving you the first part of our increase. Lord, many of us are in different seasons, but we will not let a season dictate our honor and trust in you. And so in this moment, we honor you with our gifts. We honor you with our tithes. We honor you with our offerings. There are those in this room who are soaring sacrificially to help us evangelize this city. I pray in the name of Jesus, your word is declared that you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God, we know that you said if we proved you in this area, God, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings. We have not room enough to receive it. So, Father, I pray that your people walk in the full power of your blessing throughout this week. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church say amen. There's someone in the aisle that's ready to serve you to your left and your right. If you have a physical envelope, they'll be glad to receive that. Can you put your hands together for all that God has done? Help me welcome to the stage, Pastor Billy. As he goes to Hearts and minds are clear. Everyone standing. It's about time to go. Hallelujah. If anyone needs prayer, the elders of the church will keep the altar open. So if you need prayer, there's something on your heart, something on your mind that you need someone to agree with you with, this altar will be open even as we dismiss and close out service. So our elders will be here for you. Amen. Uh, for those that are interested in liturgical dance and being a part of the Easter production, Miss Danny and Brother Christopher uh, will be in the sanctuary also waiting for you to meet. Amen. Uh, our Christmas, our, excuse me, Easter production is a couple weeks out, so we are moving pretty fast. So if you would like to 
participate. Please see those two individuals. Amen. Uh, have we been blessed? Can we put our hands together and bless God for our shepherd, our apostle, and the word that came forth? Let us pray. Father God, we love you and we bless you for what our eyes have seen and our hearts have felt. Father, we thank you for this new series, Breaking Bad. Father, we thank you, Father, for giving us the discernment, Father, who is to enter and exit out of our lives. Father, we thank you, Father, for making us better stewards over those people, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, as we leave this place, not your presence, Father, I pray, Father, that the enemy not steal this word, but Father, we find ourselves sometime this week, Father, walking out these applications that you've given us today. Father, we love you and we bless you. Keep us safe until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, the altar is open.